Okay, <clears throat> there's three kinds of people that come to debates. There's the, the pro-lifers that come to cheer for you. You're not going to change their minds. They're already on your side. There's the hardcore pro-aborts who came to jeer you. You're not, probably not going to change their minds. And then there's the people who come because they're getting college, or some class is giving them extra credit for it. There's also apathy among pro-lifers. Why aren't they more involved in our group? And then also you get people in the group, but they're not really involved as much as you'd like them. So all of these uh, kinds of apathy are important to combat. Uh, Dr. King uh, fought apathy. In fact, when, his, when he talks about what he did, it was all designed to push people out of the comfortable middle, to force people to take a stand. Um, and he used images to do that. He uh, organized his marches and so forth so that pictures of, of black men and women being attacked with dogs and water cannons and all of that would be on television and, and he would force people to see what racism looked like and therefore to care about it. By seeing it, he forced them to care about it and he created a tension in society because he said that with, unless there is some uncomfort or discomfort in society with respect to the status quo, then there is no pressure for change. So uh, he also faced this apathy. And he said that America will not stop racism until America sees racism. And there's a lot of things we're gonna talk about. They're all gonna be important, but I think one element that you have to include is, do people really know what abortion is? And I can tell you that if you haven't shown them, they don't. So within the entire student body, what you wanna do is change the way people feel, think, and behave. You wanna neutralize our opposition. You want to convert the neutral. Among pro-lifers, you want to get them activated because they're already converted, but now you want to activate them. And the people that are already in your group, they're active, but you want to energize them. So those, you're trying to reach a whole group of all different kinds of people. And I guess um, when Kristen told me about this, she said, you know, two of the big projects that we see that, that uh, that seem to break through that apathy is the Crosses for the Unborn and the Genocide Awareness Project. And it occurred to me, as soon as I saw that list, that, um, that um, those projects were big and visible. You, you couldn't miss them. And that's one of the reasons that they break through that apathy. And so how can we do, other, how can we do more projects that are big and visible? Let's look for projects that are big and visible and of the projects that we're already doing that we like, that we think have an impact, how can we make them even better by making them more big and more visible? Or how can we add big and visible elements to those projects? And I don't, and I don't, have, a, I don't have a long list of answers for that. I got a couple up to suggest. So here's the Cemetery of the Innocents. We all know what that looks like. Of course, here's our Genocide Awareness Project. This is at the University of California, Berkeley. as opposed to uh, a speaker, an event where a few hundred people might show up or even a hundred, which would be a great big crowd. Uh, when you're outside and you're in front of people with something big, thousands of people are coming to your event whether they want to or not because they walk right past it. And you actually fight through a lot of the apathy. And it's funny because when we're doing these projects, even our opposition, we're teaching them because they come around and listen to what we have to say and look at the pictures and learn for themselves what, what the baby is and what abortion looks like. We're accomplishing exactly what Dr. King sought to accomplish. So these big invisible projects are outdoors. They engage thousands of people. They engage people without their consent, which is important. We make people learn facts that they really don't want to learn. We engage their emotions. Uh, we become visible to pro-lifers who don't even know we exist. Because there's a lot of pro-lifers that would like to be involved in pro-life activism, but they never really thought about it before. It never really occurred to them to seek out a pro-life group. So you have to be big and visible enough to get their attention. And, um, and people uh, really pick and choose where they want to invest their time. And one factor is, if I come and join your group, are you going to be doing something that's really going to be effective? Or are we just going to be spinning our wheels and not doing things that really make a difference? So by being big and visible, you're capturing the imagination of those potential members who want to be a part of something that's actually making a difference. Now, you can also take your smaller projects and make them bigger and more visible. I got a, an, an idea. You know, a lot of people do poll tables. 
as a way of engaging students. There's an example of one, should abortion remain legal? Well, what if you added a poll table to just one sign, just one picture sign, and asked the question, should abortion be legal at 24 weeks? I just picked out a question that happened to match the sign that I had. Here's another question, is the U.S. Supreme Court always right? That's a provocative question. Pair that with a sign that talks about times that people agree the court was wrong. For example, the, uh, the Supreme Court decision of uh, uh, the Dred Scott decision of 1857. And a lot of people walk up to you because they see that picture and it pushes them out of their level of comfort. And you can add signs, handheld signs, to just about any project. You could pair a couple of these signs with a uh, crosses display. So just a couple of ideas. Do big invisible projects. Take the projects you're doing that you like. Figure out ways to add, make them bigger, more visible, more provocative. Thank you, Fletcher. Brian, do you want to, you can sit here.